Hello, my friends. How you doing? Welcome to day number nine. Today, we're going to be taking a look at expanding on the code that we wrote yesterday in day eight when we were creating our scratch with LEDs and buzzers and the light and the and the sprites in the actual coding game um, to make that stuff happen. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to crank that up a notch and the way we're going to do that is we are actually going to be going through here and we are going to be working on that in a way that's going to allow us to make it interactive so let's go ahead and dive into this we're going to go back up here to our raspberry pi i got to open up my scratch program again here and pull up that program from yesterday And while that's loading, our goals today is we're going to be removing some blocks. If you remember from yesterday, we just used a forever loop block, meaning that whatever we put in there was just going to happen forever and ever and ever. Um, I did show in my example a way to use some keyboard presses, but today we're going to be changing that up so we can actually slowly make one more step in the direction of actually creating our own interactive games. And so we're going to take a look here, hopefully the scratch will load here in just a second, um, at our Frank sprite uh, once this loads. So let me go ahead and get my program loaded up. Um, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this load from your computer. All right, I got this scratch sound and lights program. I'm going to open that up. And I want to keep this one um, for that lesson. I like it. I want maybe want to come back and make that a you know, something else different down the road. So well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here now. I'm going to save to my computer. And I'm just going to create another program with those exact same blocks. And I'm just going to call it interactive because that's the lesson that we're doing. And hit save. And now I can see it. My name's changed up there, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little bit more. There we go. All right, so our first step that we want to do with this program is we're going to pull down the forever block uh, that we currently have on our sprite. Now, we'll have to eventually do this for all our sprites. So I'm going to show you with Frank. That's just what the project guide on Raspberry Pi uses. Um, and just know that you're going to have to replicate that with your other sprite characters. So I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to separate it from when I receive the start. And once we do that, what we need to do then is pull out all the code in that forever loop, and we're going to get rid of that forever loop. So the way we do that here, I can, here I can expand this a little bit, it might be easier to see, there we go, is I'm actually just going to take this top block, and I'm going to click and press and just drag over, and you can see all the code goes with it. Now we've got our forever all by itself, I'm just going to drag this guy over here, and see you later, alligator. Now that we have that, we want to create a new event block in this. And actually what we're going to do this time is we're going to pick one we haven't used yet. So we're going to go to events and we're going to choose when the sprite is clicked. So now this code will activate when we actually click the sprite on our screen or on our canvas. Um, and our canvas here is small. Just so you know, you can always expand that to make it bigger or smaller, however you want. Uh, when you're running these in, in full mode and you start to create some really awesome games here in the future. And what we're going to do here is just drag this guy right over here, right on top. So now it's going to be when the sprite is clicked. So just so you can see that here, if you check out, I just turned on the code. All right. So if I click on Frank, you should see in the small corner, these things turn on here. Okay. So we've got that rocking and rolling there. I don't know if you can see that light. It's hard to see here. Let me dim this down so you can see that I'm actually making this happen here. That middle light is pretty dark, just hard to see. So I'm going to click on Frank. There you go. Now you can see it. There it was. Boom. Looking nice. Looking nice. All right. So you can see how that one block now, we're slowly making those steps to make our program and our games or whatever it is we're doing to be a little bit more interactive. And so the reason we removed the forever block is we didn't want to keep blinking forever and ever. We just want it to blink when the sprite is clicked. And that's why we got rid of that block. So now we need to go ahead and do this on all our other sprites. So I'm going to jump over here. You remember Fred? Yeah, we have we got Fred right here. So I'm going to go ahead and 
separate this out, then drag this out, get rid of the forever, and we're going to pick when the sprite is clicked. And I can go ahead and get rid of that block. That's not needed. Keep that cleaned up. And we'll go to our ghost. And we will drag forever off. And then we'll pull that block out. Get rid of forever. Bring over the sprite click event block. And so now, if I dim this again here. Oh, I'll brighten it. Brightening it? Is that even a word? Maybe I should learn some, some speaking skills here instead of Raspberry Pi. All right, let's go ahead and try this out here. So there's our red for Fred. We got Frank here. We got our ghost, which should be a buzzer, which is really hard to hear, but I promise you it's actually making a noise. Okay, so now we know that that stuff is, is going here. Let's now go ahead and go back to Frank. And let's go ahead and change this here. And now what we're going to do is start to make this a little more interactive. And okay, so let's make this a little more interactive. Let's make sure that we're actually on Frank. So I'm going to double check my sprite over here just so I know that I'm with the Frank code. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over a forever block. Yes, I know we just dragged it over and deleted it. Just Please don't hate me for that, but this is a process that we're working through, trying to keep your code palette clean, and then coming back and bringing in just what it is that, that you want. And we're going to go up here to this move block now. And in this move block, we're going to use this move 10 steps. So it's going to move Frank 10 steps. In this case, it's going to be uh, to the right, I believe. And we're going to turn him then 15 degrees. So he's going to constantly be moving in different patterns. But we want to keep him moving, not just going back to the same spots all the time. So what we're going to do here, and you can eventually test this out and try different numbers. We're going to go here to move 10 steps again. But now let's move them counterclockwise. And the last thing that we want to do here is we want to make sure that we add this block here, if on edge, bounce. What this block will do is keep your sprite from going off the screen. There is a XY coordinate on here, and your sprite will continue to just move to the trajectory. But you're on your screen, you only see so many placemat places on the screen. So once they move beyond that, they're off your screen, and it's a pain in the butt to try to bring it back. And it's just not really what people want is to have their sprites disappear. So this if on edge bounce is when they reach the edge of your canvas or your programming canvas, it'll bounce them back in. Kind of think of like the old school Pong game. It'll keep them from not going beyond the edges. So let's go ahead and run this. And I guess my, my question to you right now is what do you think is going to happen? Will we see anything drastically change with the way we have our code set up right now? So if I hit run here and hit click the green flag and then I click on Fred or Frank. Hmm. Nothing's really working. I wonder why that is. So maybe we need to change something. What is it that we're missing on this on this program? Can you see it? So what we need to do here is go through on this and we need to add a movement section to our code. So we could do one or two things. We could start when it's on, we start the program or we could start it on the very first click. So let's try it down here and see what it does. All right, so you can see him bouncing off back and forth. And now the challenge would be, can I actually click him? Now it's gonna be pretty easy. He's going in a set path here. Dang, he's going fast, isn't he? Ah, oh, there we go, we finally got him, whoo! And he's gonna keep going again and again and again. All right, and we can see here now, if I maybe change this to be, uh, Let's make it 65, and then we can make this, uh, how about 35? Let's just see what happens. Uh, now he's stuck. So what if we make this five degrees, and we make this 15 degrees? Oh, now we got a different pattern. Holy cow, look at him go. Ah, I gotta get him. Oh, there we go. Man, I'm quick. I'm like a ninja today. I'm feeling good about that. 
All right, so now you can see what we want to do. Now we could go ahead and do this now to all the other sprites and kind of get them moving and trying different things, trying different edges and numbers and figuring that out. And so your challenge now is to expand on this. Try to do something for all three of your sprites, getting them moving uh, and grooving in those types of ways. You could change this up. Remember our operators? We have this pick random. Remember we were using this block for time earlier in a previous lesson? I could go here now to these move 10 steps and I could pick this now if I wanted to. I could change that in there. You know, I could say from, uh, let's go from five to 10. And I could do that for down here too on this move block. And now we're gonna get different patterns while I keep that code going. You can see now it's even more random than what it was before. And so you can do the same thing with your turn. You could do this pick random again on the turn and you could pick, you know, seven to 15 or whatever it is that you want to do. And so I could add that to this as well. And I'll make it five to 13. So now we got even more randomness moving and trying to get them, you know? And so now I got to try to click on them I hope you see where we're going with this. We're going to start creating some excellent games, and we'll eventually continue down this pipeline later and for some bonus projects where we can add a scoreboard and we can do time and all sorts of crazy good stuff. But for now, I want you to go ahead and do this for all three of your sprites. And you could do this in a couple ways. I'll give you some tips. So let me go ahead and stop this here. If you don't want them to wait for you to click the sprite to begin, I could just drag this forever block that we just coded over here when the program starts. So I could put it over there like when the green flag is, is clicked. I can now go and he's going to start moving right away. And now I got to try to click on him to get the light to turn on. There we go. Okay, so now you can kind of play around with that. So your challenge for today is to get all three sprites moving, maybe add some costumes, some different turns, some different effects. You could write some other code in there if you wanted to try to sample the if block. So if the sprite is pressed, maybe it turns to another outfit or changes the color and then goes back. There's a lot of possibilities. So have some fun, experiment with this and tinker. And I can't wait to see what you create. Please share your code and your, your programs over in the Slack channel so we can check that out. And uh, I can't wait to see what you create. All right, my, all right, my friends, as always, stay awesome.